While Andalucía is known for its olive oil and Iberico ham, it also produces sherry, a fortified wine made near the town of Jerez. Sherry has a protected designation of origin, and all wine labeled as sherry must come from the Sherry Triangle, an area between Jerez de la Frontera, Sanlúcar de Barrameda, and El Puerto de Santa Maria. Sherry has been traditionally uh, regarded as a, as a good, uh, very good aperitif wine or a dessert wine if we talk about the sweet styles of sherry. But we are convinced, and this is the way we treat sherry here at home, that uh, this is a, a great wine to accompany food. And this is, uh, as I said, this is the way we enjoy sherry uh, here in, in Jerez. So uh, what we're doing is trying to pass the message that, that sherry, because of, because of the enormous variety of styles, and the versatility and the power and the, uh, that capacity that the sherry has to enhance the taste, the flavors of food is, is a great companion for. So uh, every uh, second year we have a competition here which would uh, join uh, restaurants, uh, chefs and sommeliers from seven different countries. Uh, in each of those countries we also run this uh, national competition. Basically what the whole idea behind tapas is going from one flavor to the other, uh, going from a langostino uh, down to some chorizo, some manchego cheese, some uh, Iberian ham. Uh, when we drink fino with it, what we're doing, we're cleaning our palate in every sip. Uh, so you appreci appreciate every step in your tapas menu uh, thoroughly without mixing flavors in your palate. Cesar Saldana, Director General of the Regulatory Board that governs all sherry production, explains the unique way that sherry is produced. Sherry is uh, basically the result of a, of a long history, a long tradition. We've been making wines for 3,000 years and it's also the result of a, a very precise uh, natural conditions. Uh, it all starts with, uh, with a very peculiar soil that we call the albariza, which is capable to absorb the rainfall that we get in, in just a few days during the year, and three white grape varieties. Uh, Palomino grape variety is the most important one, and then we have two other grape varieties, Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel, that we use for the sweet styles of sherry. Uh, at the beginning, we do, uh, what we do is making a white wine. But there is a very uh, special natural phenomenon in this area. The white wines will develop a kind of cream in the surface, a kind of a layer of yeasts, which is what we call floor. And that floor will confer very, uh, very special uh, organoleptic characteristics to, to, to that wine. It'll be the decision of the winemaker either to keep the floor or uh, Getting, uh, taking the floor out to uh, open the possibilities of different sherry styles. If we manage to keep the floor, we will have what we call the finos and the manzanillas. These are extremely light wines, very pale in color, very pungent, beautiful aperitif wines, beautiful also for the seafood, very refreshing, but very dry. Uh, if we increase the alcoholic strength of the wine, uh, and therefore we get rid of the floor, the wine loses that uh, layer that is protecting it from direct contact with the oxygen, and it gets much darker in color, kind of amber color, uh, mahogany color if uh, uh, very uh, aged. This is how we produce what we call the amontillados and the olorosos. These are, uh, these are much uh, uh, stronger, deeper wines with uh, very deep aromas, uh, in which wood uh, will gain a very prominent role. The old wines, Amontillados and Olorosos, are concentrated wines. Most of the time, very old wines, small quantities, and to be consumed in small quantities, and not on the same set. You can keep a bottle a few weeks, including one year, to consume because the wine remain in good conditions. Sherry can be divided roughly into three different styles. First, there are the pale, dry finos and manzanillas. These are the wines most Andalusians will enjoy with their tapas, and they are excellent with simple, straightforward dishes of olives or almonds, iberico or serrano hams, or well-aged cheeses. Then there are the more intense flavors that come with darker-hued and darker-flavored amontillados and olorosos, and are considered optimum with meats, 
especially wild game and grilled red meats. Finally, there are the sweet sherries, made by blending sweet Pedro Jimenez with the Oloroso to create cream sherries that are terrific with soft, ripe cheeses, especially blue cheeses, and of course, with foie gras. Uh, all the different styles of sherry that we produce, either the very fine pangent finos or the very bold, very uh, structured olorosos, um, uh, they are also aged uh, through a very, uh, very special type of uh, aging process that we call the solera uh, method. Uh, the solera is basically uh, a system in which we are taking the wine to different scales of maturation, blending the wines with the uh, with the other vintages, with uh, with with wines with different uh, different degrees of maturation, to have a consistent quality at the end of the process. Maybe after five, ten, fifteen years, it, it depends on the type of of sherry. Uh, this is how we produce the dry sherries, but then those dry sherries can also be blended with the sweet. Uh, wines that we produce out of the uh, Pedro Jimenez and the Moscatel grape varieties. So when we speak about the Solera system, we're talking about different scales of maturation in the aging of our wines. Here in the lower row of casks is where we have the older wines. This, this row we call them the Solera, and this is coming from the word suelo, meaning floor, right? So this is where the wines that have material for longer are always kept. Here we have what we call the first criadera, then the second criadera. We can have different scales of maturation, all right? Now, when we need to bottle some sherry, we will always take that wine from the lower casks, so from those casks in the solera. And we only take a small fraction out of, the, uh, out of each barrel, the same quantity from each of the, of the barrels in the solera row, right? This is what we bottle, of course, we have to filter and, that, and, and then we, we bottle it. So now the quantity that we have taken out from each of the barrels in the Solera will be replaced by this wine, which is, which is a little younger, right? The, the one in the first uh, Criadera casks, right? So we transfer that same quantity into the next uh, scale of maturation. We continue doing the same from the second Criadera into the first. And we can have as many criaderas as you wish. I mean, there, there are some systems here in, in Jerez with uh, maybe 12, 15 criaderas. Obviously, we don't place them one on top of the other. We have them in different places. But the important thing is that we have always those scales of maturation perfectly identified and that the young ones will continue always the same path. Because it's in the youngest of all the criaderas that we will give entrance to the wines from the last harvest. The young wine will enter the youngest criadera, will be blended already with wines that have been sitting there for, for years. Then that blend will be re-blended in the next stage and then re-blended until they reach the Solera uh, casks. One sherry wine that's gained a lot of attention among chefs and sommelier recently is Manzanilla, a type of pale, dry fino sherry that is only made in the small town of San Lucar de Barrameda, at the edge of the sea where the great Guadalquivir River empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Now the way Manzanera is made, um, it's the, 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 we get the young wine from the Palomino grape in our vineyards that's pressed, we get the free-run juice, uh, and we only use free-run juice for Manzanilla. Uh, and uh, that young wine is totally dry, There's, uh, it, the fermentation is complete. When I discovered Manzanilla, which was many years ago, I discovered it in its right context when I came here to, to Spain and above all to Andalusia. The tapas culture is very, very much an Andalusian uh, eating concept um, and uh, the, the quintessential tapas wine has always been Manzanilla. The sherry is a great wine for food because, uh, as I said, uh, it, 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 uh, when, when you drink, uh, when you sip a little bit of manzanilla or fino, I mean, your taste buds are alerted immediately. Uh, sherry is a great taste enhancer because uh, in every sip you're getting your palate excited. Uh, so you appreci appreciate every step in your tapas menu uh, thoroughly without mixing flavors in your palate. Mm -hmm.